economic compositions date from prior to Mesopotamian, Greek and Roman, Indian subcontinent, Chinese, Persian and Arab developments. Eminent authors from all times through the 14th century incorporate Aristotle, Xenophon, Chanakya, otherwise called Kortila, Queen Shi Huang, Thomas Aquinas and Ibn Khaldun. Joseph Schumpeter portrayed Aquinas as coming closer than whatever another gathering to being the organizers of experimental economic matters, as to money-linked, finest and featured hypothesis inside of a characteristic law perspective. Two gatherings later on, called mercantilists and physiocrats, more specifically affected the resulting improvement of the subject. Both gatherings were connected with the ascent of monetary patriotism and cutting-edge private enterprise in Europe. Mercantilism was an economic precept that thrived from the 16th to the 18th century in productive leaflet writing, whether of traders or statesmen. It held that a country's riches relied upon its amassing of gold and silver. Countries without access to mines could get gold and silver from exchange just by offering merchandise abroad and limiting imports other than of gold and silver. The tenet called for importing modest crude materials to be utilized as a part of assembling products which could be traded and for state regulation to force defensive levies on remotely fabricated merchandise and preclude fabricating in the colonies. Physiocrats, a group of 18th century French masterminds and authors, added to the economy as a roundabout stream of wage and yield. Physiocrats trusted that just horticultural creation produced an unmistakable surplus of a cost, with the goal that farming was the premise of all riches. In this manner, they contradicted the mercantilist approach of advancing assembling and exchange to the detriment of agribusinesses, including import taxes. Physiocrats supported supplanting authoritatively expensive assessment accumulations with a solitary duty on the pay of area proprietors. In response to abundant mercantilist exchange regulations, the physiocrats supported an approach of free enterprise which called for insignificant government meditation in the economy. Adam Smith (1723–1790) was an early economic theorist. Smith was brutally disapproving of the mercantilists, yet portrayed the physiocratic scaffold with every one of its blemishes as maybe the purest guess to the reality that has yet been distributed on the matter. An Introduction to Economics Before getting to know about the history of anything, it is useful that you know about it and have a clear idea of its basics. Definition of Economics Arranged Command Economy An arranged economy, otherwise called an ordered economy or midway arranged economy, is an economic framework in which the state or government controls the variables of formation and reconciles on all choices about their utilization and about the circulation of pay. In such an economy, the organizers choose what ought to be delivered and take direct actions to create those products. Arranged economies are rather than spontaneous economies i.e. a business sector economy where creation, dissemination and estimating choices are made by the private proprietors of the variables of generation based on their own particular hobbies, as opposed to after encouraging some overall macroeconomic arrangement. Market economy A business sector economy otherwise known as the free market economy or free endeavor economy, is a financial framework in which the generation and circulation of merchandise and administrations happen through the component unconstrained markets. Organizations and buyers choose what they will deliver and buy, the amount they will create, what to charge products and administrations, what to pay workers and so on. In the perfect business sector economy, the administration does not compel the business sector. Cost and generation are actually managed by supply, interest and rivalry. By and large, all finances are blended economies consolidating changing degrees of the business sector and order economy qualities. For instance, in the United States, there are more market economy qualities than in Western Europe nations. 
Blended economy A blended economy typically contains a blend of financial frameworks, both private claimed and state-possessed ventures or joint components of contending monetary speculations. Applicable viewpoints may include different degrees of private financial flexibility, counting exclusive industry, blended with brought-together monetary arrangement, which might incorporate intercession for environmentalism and social welfare or state responsibility of method for generation. What is economics? Economic aspects might have all the earmarks of being the investigation of confounded tables and outlines, measurements and numbers, be that as it may, all the more particularly it is the investigation of what constitutes objective human conduct in the try to satisfy needs. As a person, for instance, you confront the issue of having just constrained assets with which to satisfy your needs, subsequently you should settle on specific decision with your cash. You most likely spend some portion of your cash on rent, power and nourishment. At that point, you may utilize the rest to go to the motion pictures and or purchase another pair of pants. Market analysts are keen on the decision you make and ask why, for example, you may spend your cash on another DVD player as opposed to supplanting your old TV. They would need to know whether you would, in any case, purchase a container of cigarettes if costs expanded by $2 per pack. The fundamental pith of economic aspects is to make an attempt to see how both people and countries act in light of certain material requirements. It can be said, in this manner, that economic matter, regularly alluded to as the inauspicious science, is an investigation of specific parts of society. Adam Smith, the father of cutting-edge economic aspects and writer of the acclaimed book An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations, brought forth the order of economic matters by attempting to comprehend why a few countries succeeded while others lingered behind in neediness. Others after him likewise investigated how a country's distribution of assets influences its riches. To think about these things, economic makes the suspicion that individuals will mean to satisfy one's self-intrigues. It likewise expects that people are level-headed in their endeavours to satisfy their boundless needs and needs. Economic, in this way, is a sociology which looks at individuals acting as per their self-intriguing. The definition set out at the turn of the 20th century by Alfred Marshall, creator of the Principle of Economics, 1890, mirrors the multifaceted nature of hidden economic. Hence, it is on one side the investigation of riches and on the other and more vital side a part of the investigation of man. Before leading you further into the discussion of economics, let's first have the concept of scarcity, macroeconomics and microeconomics. Scarcity Scarcity, an idea you will as of now certainly examine in the prologue to this instructional exercise, alludes to the strain between one's restricted assets and boundless needs. For an individual, assets incorporate time, cash and aptitude. For a nation, restricted assets incorporate normal assets, capital, work power and innovation. Since the majority of your assets are constrained in contrast with the greater part of your needs and necessity, people and countries need to settle on choices in regards to what products and administrations they can purchase and which ones they should do without. For instance, on the off chance that you purchase one DVD rather than two videotapes, you should surrender owning a second motion picture of subpar innovation in return for the higher nature of the one DVD. Obviously, every person and country will have diverse qualities, yet by having distinctive levels of rare assets, individuals and countries have some of these qualities as a consequence of the specific shortages with which they are confronted. Thus, in view of shortage, individuals and economies must settle on choices over how to distribute their assets. Financial aspects thus intends to study why one should settle on these choices and how to assign your assets effectively. Macro and Microeconomics 
macro and microeconomics are the two vantage focuses from which the economy is watched. Macroeconomics takes a gander at the aggregate yield of a country and the way the country assigns its constrained assets of the area, work and capital, trying to boost creation levels and advance exchange and development for future eras. Subsequent to watch the general public, all in all, Adam Smith noticed that there was an undetachable hand turning the wheels of the economy, a business sector compel that keeps the economy working. Microeconomics investigates comparative issues, yet on the level of the distinctive individuals and firms inside of the economy. It has a tendency to be more logical in its methodology and studies the parts that make up the entire economy. Breaking down specific parts of human conduct, microeconomics demonstrates to people how they and firms react to changes in cost and why they request what they do at specific value levels. Micro and macroeconomics are interwoven. As business analysts increase comprehension of certain wonders, they can help countries and people settle on more educated choices while allotting assets. The frameworks by which countries distribute their assets can be put on a range where the order economy is on the one end and the business sector economy is on the other. The business sector economy advocates strengths inside of an aggressive business sector which constitute the imperceptible hand to decide how assets should be assigned. The order economic framework depends on the administration to choose how the nation's assets would best be distributed. In both frameworks, be that as it may, shortage and boundless needs constrain governments and people to choose how best to oversee assets and dispense them in the most proficient way imaginable. By the by, there are dependably breaking points regarding what the economy and government can do. A few basics of economics Production Possibility Frontier PPF Underneath the ground of macroeconomics, the Production Possibility Frontier PPF, speaks to the time when an economy is most proficiently creating its merchandise and benefits and thus assigning its assets in an ideal way that is available. In the event that the economy is not delivering the amount showed by the PPF, assets are being overseen wastefully and the generation of society will decrease. The creation plausibility outskirts appear there are breaking points to generation, so an economy to accomplish productivity must choose what blend of merchandise and administrations can be delivered. Opportunity cost Opportunity cost is the estimation of what is inevitable so as to have something else. This quality is one of a kind for every person. You might, for example, do without frozen yogurt, keeping in mind the end goal to have an additional aiding of pureed potatoes. For you, the pureed potatoes have a more noteworthy quality than sweet. Be that as it may, you can simply alter your opinion later on in light of the fact that there might be a few examples when the pureed potatoes are simply not as appealing as the dessert. The open door expense of an individual's choices along these lines is dictated by his or her needs, time and assets, wage. This is essential to the PPF in light of the fact that a nation will choose how to best designate its assets as indicated by its chance expense. How about looking at an example to show how opportunity cost guarantees that an individual will purchase the minimum costly of two comparative products when given the decision? For instance, accept that an individual has a decision between two phone administrations. On the off chance that he or she were to purchase the most costly administration, that individual might need to reduce the number of times he or she goes to the motion pictures every month. Surrendering these chances to go to the motion pictures might be an expense that is too high for this individual, driving him or her to pick the less costly administration. Keep in mind that open door expense is distinctive for every person and country. In this manner, what is esteemed more than something else will differ among individuals and nations when choices are made about how to dispense assets. Exchange, comparative advantage and absolute advantage. 
specialization and comparative advantage. An economy can concentrate on creating the greater part of the products and administrations it needs to work. However, this might prompt a wasteful distribution of assets and frustrate future development. By utilizing specialization, a nation can focus on the generation of one thing that it can do best instead of separating up its assets. For instance, suppose a speculative world that has just two nations, country A and country B, and two items, autos and cotton. Every nation can make autos and or cotton. Presently assume that country A has next to no prolific area and a wealth of steel for auto creation. Nation B, then again, has a wealth of rich land yet almost no steel. On the off chance that country A was to attempt to deliver both autos and cotton, it would need to isolate up its assets. Since it requires a great deal of push to deliver cotton by flooding the area, country A would need to yield creating autos. The open door expense of delivering both autos and cotton is high for country A, which will need to give up a great deal of capital with a specific end goal to create both. Correspondingly, for country B, the open door expense of creating both items is high in light of the fact that the exertion required to deliver autos is more noteworthy than that of creating cotton. Every nation can create one of the items all the more effectively at a lower expense than the other. Nation A, which has a plentitude of steel, would need to surrender a great number of autos than country B would create the same measure of cotton. Nation B would need to surrender more cotton than country A to create the same measure of autos. Consequently, country A has a near favorable position over country B in the generation of autos, and country B has a relative point of interest over country A in the creation of cotton. Presently, suppose that both nations, A and B, spend significant time in creating the products with which they have a similar point of preference. On the off chance that they exchange the merchandise that they deliver for different merchandise, in which they don't have a near point of interest, both nations will have the capacity to appreciate both items at a lower open-door cost. Moreover, every nation will be trading the best item it can make for another great, or administration that better than the one other nation can deliver. Specialization and exchange additionally work when a few distinct nations are included. For instance, if country C has some expertise in the generation of corn, it can exchange its corn for autos from country A and cotton from country B. Deciding how nations trade products delivered by a near point of preference, the best generally advantageous, is the foundation of worldwide exchange hypothesis. This technique for trade is viewed as an ideal assignment of assets whereby economies, in principle, will never again be missing anything that they require. Like open-door cost, specialization is similar favorable position likewise apply to the route in which people collaborate inside of an economy. Outright advantage Once in a while, a nation or an individual can create more than another nation despite the fact that nations both have the same measures of inputs. For instance, country A might have an innovative point of preference that, with the same measure of inputs, arable area, steel, work, empowers the nation of fabricate a greater amount of both autos and cotton than country B. A nation that can deliver a greater amount of both products is said to have an outright point of preference. Better quality assets can give a nation a flat-out point of preference as can a more elevated amount of instruction and general mechanical progression. It is unrealistic, notwithstanding, for a nation to have a near point of interest in everything that it produces, so it will dependably have the capacity to profit by profession. Monopolies, Oligopolies and Perfect Competition Economic specialists accept that there are various distinctive purchasers and vendors in the commercial center. This implies that people have a rivalry in the business sector, which permits costs to change because of changes in supply and request. Moreover, for verging on each item, there are substitutes, 
so if one item turns out to be excessively costly, a purchaser can pick a less expensive substitute. In a business sector with numerous purchasers and merchants, both the customer and the supplier have rise to capacity to impact cost. In a few commercial enterprises, there are no substitutes and there is no opposition. In a business sector that has one and only or couple of suppliers of a decent or administration, the producers can control value, implying that a purchaser does not have decision, can't expect his or her aggregate utility and should not impact the cost of merchandise. Syndication is a business sector structure in which there is standout maker or vendor for an item. At the end of the day, the single business is the business. Passage into such a business sector is limited because of high expenses or different hindrances, which might be economic, social or political. For example, an administration can make a restraining infrastructure over an industry that it needs to control, for example, power. Another explanation behind the boundaries against section into a monopolistic industry is that as a rule, one element has the selective rights to characteristic asset. For instance, in Saudi Arabia, the administration has sole control over the oil business. A restraining infrastructure might likewise frame when an organization has a copyright or patent that keeps others from entering the business sector. In an oligopoly, there are just a couple firms that make up an industry. This selected gathering of firms has control of the cost and similar to a restraining infrastructure, an oligopoly has high obstructions to passage. The items that the oligopolistic firms produce are frequently indistinguishable and in this manner the organizations which are seeking a piece of the pie are associated as a consequence of business sector strengths. Expect, for instance, that an economy needs just 100 gadgets. Organization X produces 50 gadgets and its rival, company Y, delivers the other 50. The costs of the two brands will be associated and subsequently comparative. Thus, if company X begins offering the gadgets at a lower value, it will get a more noteworthy piece of the overall industry, in this manner compelling company Y to lower its costs too. There are two amazing types of business sector structures, restraining infrastructure and its inverse immaculate rivalry. Immaculate rivalry is portrayed by numerous purchasers and dealers, numerous items that are comparable in nature and subsequently numerous substitutes. Immaculate rivalry implies there are few, if any, hindrances to passage for new organizations and costs are controlled by supply and request. Along these lines, makers in a superbly aggressive business sector are liable to the costs controlled by the business sector and don't have any influence. For instance, in a superbly-focused business sector, or to a solitary firm choose to build its offering cost of decent, the buyers can simply swing to the closest contender at a superior cost, bringing on any firm that expands its costs to lose a piece of the overall industry and benefits. History of Economics A brief history of economics permits us profitable point of view on the nature and techniques utilized as a part of economic reality. It is qualified to know that economics is not simply a fiscal reality. Economy by definition envelopes administration of issues and costs, thrift utilization of material assets, effectiveness. Most quite, the definition incorporates the method of operation of something and frameworks of association and trade. By extrapolation, we can see that economy manages how things cooperate. This incorporates cash and material. In the connection of human abuse of assets, which is the premise of human material efficiency, the comprehension of the economy, keeping in mind the end goal to be finished, must incorporate worldwide asset limit and rate of human utilization of those assets alongside the financial economy and prosperity of the human culture. Just in a complete thought of all economies of the material abundance of Earth's assets and human limits, would we be able to start to comprehend what a sound economy may really be? Free Market – Late Medieval and Early Present-day Europe 
A free market depicts a hypothetical, glorified or real market where the cost of a thing is organized by the common non-forced assent of merchants and purchasers, with the supply and request of that thing not being managed by an administration. The inverse is a controlled business sector where government sets or directs costs specifically or through controlling supply and or request. Be that as it may, while a free market requires that legislature does not direct supply, request and costs, it additionally requires the merchants themselves don't constrain or delude each other with the goal that all exchanges are ethically willful. This is not to be mistaken for an immaculate business sector where people have impeccable data and there is a flawless rivalry. To some degree, hopeful in its idea, a free market accepts that members don't delude or pressure parts of the business sector value, supply, request, don't take any interest in value settling and don't misdirect financial specialists. In real practice, history has over and over again demonstrated that this perfect world does not exist, value altering is still honed and all business sector viewpoints are controlled by pressure in the political coliseum and additionally the promotion to financial specialists and the beneficiaries of products and administrations. The statue of the free market is that legislature does not control, supply, request or costs. With unique premiums paying for political crusades, it is clear that this perfect is frustrated by business sector substances and the common propensity or craving for riches and influence. Mercantilism, 16th to 18th century Mercantilism is a financial hypothesis that holds that the thriving of a country relies on its supply of capital and that the worldwide volume of exchange is unchangeable. Financial resources or capital are spoken to by bullion, gold, silver and exchange esteem, held by the state, which is best expanded through a positive parity of exchange with different countries, sends out fewer imports. Mercantilism proposes the decision that government have to propel these objectives by assuming a protectionist part in the economy, by empowering trades and debilitating imports, particularly using duties. The financial strategy based upon these thoughts is frequently called the commercial framework. Classical Economics 1776 Classical economics is broadly viewed as the principal present-day school of monetary thought. Its significant designers incorporate Adam Smith, David Ricardo, Thomas Malthus and John Stuart Mill. Once in a while, the meaning of established economies is extended to incorporate William Petty, Johann Heinrich von Thunen and Karl Marx. The distribution of Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations in 1776 is generally considered to stamp the start of traditional economies. The school was dynamic into the mid-19th century and was trailed by neoclassical economies in Britain starting around 1870. Classical economists endeavoured and halfway succeeded to clarify development and advancement. They conveyed their wonderful elements in the middle of a period in which private enterprise was rising up out of a past primitive society and in which the modern insurgency was prompting incomprehensible changes in the public eye. These progressions likewise brought up the issue of how a general public could be sorted out around a framework in which each individual looked for his or her own money-related pickup. Classical economists reoriented economics far from an investigation of the ruler's close to home premiums to a class-based premium. Physiocrat François Quenet and Adam Smith, for instance, recognized the abundance of a country with a yearly national salary rather than the ruler's treasury. Smith saw this wage as delivered by work connected to land and capital gear. When area and capital gear are appropriated by people, the national wage is partitioned up between workers, proprietors and industrialists as wages, lease and hobby. Laissez-faire economics, 19th century, 1867 treaty marked used. Free enterprise is a French expression indicating let it be, literally let do. 
from the French expression initially utilized by the 18th century physiocrats as a directive against government obstruction with the exchange, it got to be utilized as an equivalent word for strict free market economics amongst the early and mid-19th century. It is for the most part comprehended to be a teaching that keeps up that private activity and creation are best permitted to meander free, restricting monetary interventionism and tax assessment by the state past that which is seen to be important to keep up individual freedom, peace, security and property rights. Free showcase agitators take the thought to its full length by contradicting all tax collection. In the free enterprise C, the state has no obligation to participate in constructive meditation to compel approach riches circulation or to make a welfare state to shield individuals from destitution, rather depending on philanthropy. Free enterprise additionally encapsulates unhindered commerce to be specific that a state should not utilize protectionist measures, for example, duties and sponsorships to shorten exchange through national wilderness. It additionally contains the thought that the administration ought not to make legitimate imposing business models or utilize power to harm true restraining infrastructures. In the early phases of European and American financial hypothesis, the free enterprise economic strategy appeared differently in relation to mercantilist financial approach, which had been the prevailing arrangement of the United Kingdom, Spain, France and other European nations among their ascent to control. The term free enterprise is frequently utilized conversely with the expression free market. Some utilize the term free enterprise to allude to let do, let pass status of mind for stuff outside of economics. Laissez faire is connected with established progressivism, libertarianism and objectivism. It was initially presented in the English dialect world in 1774 by George Watley in the book Principles of Trade, which was co-composed with Benjamin Franklin. Established financial experts, for example Thomas Smathers, Adam Smith and David Ricardo did not utilize the term. Bentham did, but rather just with the approach of the Anti-Corn Law League did the term get quite a bit of its means. Austrian Economics, 1871 Austrian Economics, established via Karl Menger, also called the Austrian School, Vienna School or the Mental School, is a school of economics that gets from an Aristotelian or realist approach that gets from fundamental standards of human instinct and activity. The Aristotelian or pragmatic approach contrasts both from, as of now prevailing platonic or positivist methodology of contemporary neo-traditional economics and the once overwhelming authentic methodology of the German verifiable school and the American institutionalists. An understudy of Austrian economics and Eugen von Bohm Bauwerk was Ludwig von Mises. George Reisman, creator of the government against the economy and free enterprise, wherein he tried to accommodate Keynesian and Austrian economics, was tutored by Mises. Along the lines of thought inside of this financial hypothesis, Mises felt that the business sector would self-control if given the free rule. From various perspectives, he was right. However, a few focuses appear to be missing. The model does not consider mostly the quick needs and goals of the organizations and the general population without due thought of long-haul needs. All things considered, the hypothesis is solid, however, neglects to serve the general population when weighed with long-haul need. This is primary because of the absence of foreknowledge that craving has a tendency to incite. Neoclassical Economics 1871 to 1877. Neoclassical economics allude to a general methodology in economics concentrating on the determination of costs, yields and salary conveyances in business sectors through supply and request. These are intervened through an estimated boost of wage compelled utility by people and of cost obliged benefits of firms utilizing accessible data and variables of creation. 
standard economics are to a great extent neoclassical in its presumptions, in any event at the microeconomic level. There have been numerous studies of neoclassical economies, regularly fused into more up-to-date forms of neoclassical hypotheses as human mindfulness about monetary criteria changed. Neoclassical economics are regularly called the marginalist school. Keynesian Economics 1921 to 1936. Keynesian economics advances an economy where the state and the private parts assume an imperative part. The hypothesis advances the thought that interest for merchandise is the driving component of the economy. This hypothesis, which happens to be the fundamental financial hypothesis of our present economy, presumes that there is no catalyst to accomplish a full job or drive yield and that the state and private organizations must work toward driving strategies to support such finishes. This is by all accounts rather than the principles of traditional and supply-side economics and additionally the ostrich school. Criticism the Failure of the New Economics, 1959, is a book by Henry Hazlitt, offering a point-by-point -point investigates of John Maynard Keynes' work, The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, 1936. Bettina Bean Greaves, in A Man for All Seasons, says, In economics, in one lesson, Hazlitt pulverized different Keynesian programs in a fairly serene way. At that point, in 1959, in the failure of the new economics, he evaluated Keynes' real work, The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, 1936, in the subtle element referring to section and verse. The failure of the new economics, 1959, is a great deal more academic than economics in one lesson, its business sector smaller, yet it is no way, shape or form less essential. To disprove every Keynesian blunder, Hatzlitt explained sound economic hypothesis in a way the educated community couldn't disregard. John Chamberlain, who looked into the book, in The Freeman, battles his audit, they'll never hear the end of it. The senior member of the Department of Economics at the main college scrutinized Hatzlitt's accreditations for studying the prominent Keynes. Mises went to Hatzlitt's barrier. Hatzlitt, Mises reacted, was one of the exceptional financial experts of our age, and his hostile to Keynes' books was an overwhelming investigate of the Keynesian tenets. Pandits of Hatzlitt have attested that he, over and over again, neglects to comprehend Keynes appropriately, furthermore never had the adequate scientific capacity to scrutinize Keynes. Supply-Side Economics, 1975 Supply-side economics is a school of macroeconomic that contends that economic development can be most viably overseen utilizing motivations for individuals to deliver, supply, merchandise and administrations, for example, altering pay expense and capital increases charge rates. This can diverge from the exemplary Keynesian economics or interest-side economics, which contends that development can be most adequately overseen by controlling aggregate interest for products and administrations, regularly by confirming the level of government spending. Supply-side economics is frequently conflated with trickle-down economics. The term was begat by columnist Jude Wanesky in 1975 and further promoted by the thoughts of financial analysts Robert Mundell and Arthur Laffer. Supply-side economics is dubious on the grounds that its run-of-the-mill suggestion decrease of the higher negligible expense rates offers advantages to the well-off, which analysts, for example, Paul Krugman, see as politically instead of monetarily propelled. Reagonomics, 1981 Reagonomics, a portmanteau of Reagan and economics, instituted by radio-supported Paul Harvey, is a term that has been utilized to both depict and censure free market promotion economic strategies of U.S. President Ronald Reagan, who served from 1981 to 1989, and financial strategies saw as comparative. A term parallel being used and import is Thatcherism, which alludes to the economic logic of British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, 1979-1990, who was Reagan's contemporary. 
Reganomics is most nearly connected with neoliberal monetary thought. Trickle-down economics, 1981 Trickle-down economics and trickle-down hypothesis in political talk are portrayals by adversaries of the arrangement of bringing down charges of higher livelihoods and business action. Defenders of these arrangements assert that they will advance new speculation and financial development subsequently in a roundabout way, profiting individuals who don't straightforwardly pay the duties. Rivals portray this as a case that the general population who might some way or another pay the expense will disperse their advantage to less rich people, so that a part will achieve the overall public and animate the economy. Defenders of the arrangements, by and large, don't utilize the expressions trickle-down economics themselves. Today, trickle-down economics is most firmly related to the economic strategies of the Ronald Reagan Organization, known as Reaganomics or supply-side economics. A noteworthy component of these approaches was the diminishment of duty rates on capital additions, corporate wage and higher individual earnings alongside the lessening or disposal of different extract charges. David Stockman, who as Reagan's financial plan executive championed these cuts, however then got to be wary of them, told columnist William Grader that the expression supply-side economics was utilized to advance a trickle-down thought. The expression trickle-down originates from a relationship with a marvel in advertising, the trickle-down impact. Natural Capitalism 1990s Natural capitalism is an arrangement of patterns and financial changes to compensate vitality and material productivity and evacuates proficient benchmarks and bookkeeping traditions that anticipate such efficiencies. It rose in the 1990s as a sound hypothesis of how to adventure market frameworks and components of neoclassical economics to spare vitality, dishearten waste, copy biology, biomimicry and, when all is said and done, to bolster the objectives of environmentalism by reframing thing and item relations towards an entirely benefit economy along these lines, amplifying the administrations of normal capital. Whenever promoted, the term natural capitalism more often than not alludes to the particular arrangement of changes depicted in 1999 by Paul Hawken, Amory Lovins and Hunter Lovins in the book of the same name. There is a very much created hypothesis of characteristic capital that originates before this work and some non-specific utilization of the expression to apply to ecological economics. A related here and there covering, development trusts that systems are wasteful approaches to give administrations and supporters independent structures. With every one of its achievements, economic matters is tormented with an emergency of character and dispute and contradictions on how it should be taught, how it should be rehearsed and how it have to be utilized. Besides, the field of economic aspects has been moderate in reintegrating itself into the sociologies to wind up. At the end of the day, more issue is driven and more mixed. In fact, the movement to deliberation and measurement that was begun by David Ricardo proceeded until moderately as of late and is at the wellspring of the debate about the convenience of economic aspects in advanced society. Numerous economic specialists whine around an undue consideration paid to obscure models and the inclination by few market analysts, for the most part of the universal school, to give a particularly economic response to such social inquiries as the reason for development and why a few nations are immature. Obviously, as the 20th century attracted to a nearby, there was a more noteworthy acknowledgement of the significance of non-economic variables in clarifying major economic inquiries and issues. Case in point, standard economic aspects has come to recognize the significance of history, political conditions, socio-cultural elements, nature, topography and global variables in clarifying such monetary issues as the absence of development, underdevelopment, disparity and destitution. This acknowledgement, in any case, the field of economic matters has still not genuinely centered on the basic and endemic issues that torment the world. Case in point, 
regardless of being the minimum created mainland on the planet, speaking to apparently the most overwhelming economic test in current history, Africa has been everything except disregarded by economic matters. This is astonishing in light of the way that the fields, as far as anyone knows, focal distraction is the issues of wage, development, appropriation and human welfare.